Behold, Turkey's most gigantic titan of concrete and steel, towering 275 meters high, is set to battle as one of the highest dams in the world. The Yusuf Ali Dam, rising along the Chora River in Turkey's northeastern mountains, is like no other. This colossal mammoth, capable of holding 2.1 billion cubic meters of water, has an underground power station housing three 180-megawatt vertical shaft Francis turbines. Conceived in the 1970s, this hydroelectric dam marks Turkey's bold leap into hydroelectric power as it secures a sustainable and independent energy future. It is expected to churn out an incredible 1.888 billion kilowatt hours annually, which is enough to power over 2.5 million households, and has given rise to an intricate network of infrastructure spanning 110 kilometers of roads. 45 tunnels, 22 bridges, and 92 culverts redefining the landscape, both literally and figuratively. But what is this magnificent structure? Why is it so valuable? And what technologies are used to build what will be considered one of the world's tallest dams? In the eastern Black Sea region's Artvin province, the 275-meter-high Yusufeli Dam, equivalent to a 100-story building, is a significant financial undertaking for the nation. With its foundation laid in 2013, the dam was constructed at approximately $270 million, marking a pivotal investment in Turkey's future. It was built by a consortium of major construction companies, Limac Construction, Senjiz Construction, and Collin Construction, well-known companies in the Turkish construction industry. Yusuf Ali Dam's capacity to generate 1.888 billion kilowatt hours annually means it is expected to add over $221 million to the economy each year. The dam's creation was part of the larger Chora River Development Plan, a visionary project envisioning the construction of about 13 dams harnessing the mighty Chora River. And as of 2023, is now Turkey's tallest and the world's fifth highest arch dam. The location of this mammoth of a dam was strategic. It needed to be placed upstream of the Borçka, Muratli, and Derener hydroelectric power plants, where it could use the river's natural flow to create a lot of electricity while ensuring an efficient and coordinated energy network. However, this advancement came with environmental considerations, as it impacts local biodiversity, among others we'll soon get into. Turkey, straddling the bridge between Europe and Asia, has long grappled with significant energy challenges, and as a country with limited domestic fossil fuel resources, it has historically relied heavily on energy imports to meet its growing demand. This reliance posed economic and strategic vulnerabilities, especially considering Turkey's rapidly expanding economy and increasing urbanization. The Turkish Ministry of Foreign Affairs reports that about three-quarters of Turkey's energy needs are met through imports, making energy security a critical national concern. The situation, compounded by global shifts in energy markets and geopolitical tensions, often results in fluctuating prices and supply uncertainties. Moreover, Turkey's commitments to reducing its carbon footprint and adhering to international environmental agreements necessitates shifting towards more sustainable and renewable energy sources. Now this is where the Yusuf Ali Dam came in. The Yusuf Ali Dam, more than just a structure of concrete and water, is an example of modern engineering. The dam's design is a double curvature arch, a sophisticated engineering choice that means the dam is curved horizontally and vertically, enhancing its ability to withstand the tremendous water pressure from the reservoir. The curvature effectively channels the water's force onto the abutments, the points where the dam meets the valley walls, thus distributing the pressure and reducing the stress on the dam structure itself. The use of a double curvature arch also allows for a reduction in the volume of materials needed, the dam's crest, positioned at an altitude of 715 meters above sea level and spanning a length of 490 meters, thickness of 8 meters at the crest and 90 meters at the base on the crown cantilever and a width of 15 meters, required 2.9 million cubic meters of concrete, a significant amount but less than what would have been needed for a traditional straight arch dam of a similar size. The dam's reservoir, covering a surface area of 33 square kilometers, boasts a total storage capacity of 2,130,000,000 cubic meters, with an active or useful storage of 1,080,000,000 cubic meters. 
Such vast capacity is critical for managing the water flow and ensuring consistent power generation. The Yusuf Ali Dam features an underground power station measuring 110 meters in length, 21.4 meters in width, and 45.2 meters in height. At the heart of this power station are its three 180-megawatt vertical shaft Francis turbines. These turbines are specifically designed to function under the high head conditions provided by the dam. A high head in hydroelectric power terms refers to the vertical distance the water falls. In the case of Yusuf Ali, the turbines operate under a head of 191 meters and at a rated discharge of 107 cubic meters per second, allowing them to generate significant power from the falling water. These Francis turbines are reaction turbines, which utilize the water's kinetic energy, its movement, and its potential energy, its height, to generate electricity. As water enters the turbine radially and exists axially, it spins the turbine blades at high speed, rotating a generator to produce electricity. This design makes them highly efficient and adaptable to varying water flow conditions, an essential feature given the Chora River's fluctuating flow. Building the Yusuf Ali Dam was a complex process that required meticulous planning and overcoming numerous challenges. One of the primary challenges was the earlier stated dam's location in a seismically active region. This necessitated the integration of seismic-resistant features into the dam's design, like flexible joints and materials that can absorb and dissipate seismic forces, ensuring its stability and safety even in the event of an earthquake. The dam foundation excavation, commenced in 2014, was completed in 2018, with a total of 3.9 million meters cubed of rock being removed and was constructed with conveniently vibrated mass concrete. The final concrete lift in the dam body was placed in 2021. Impoundment was initiated at the beginning of 2023 and the water depth had reached 256 meters by early September. The construction process required 60,000 tons of iron and 9,000 tons of steel, totaling around 70,000 tons. The process involves strategically placing the concrete in layers, allowing each layer to cure properly before adding the next maintaining the structural integrity of the dam. The placing of concrete in the dam body commenced in late 2018 and continued without interruption for 30 months until mid-2021. Additionally, the project involved constructing a network of roads, tunnels, bridges, and culverts totaling 110 kilometers of roads, 45 tunnels, 22 bridges, and 92 culverts to move materials and personnel. This network includes the four balanced cantilever viaducts we talked about earlier. The Tekeli Viaduct at 644 meters, the Yusuf Ali Viaduct at 695 meters, the Yusuf Ali Dam Viaduct at 340 meters, and the Silinkar Viaduct at 530 meters in length. The construction of the Yusuf Ali Dam, while an engineering marvel, raised significant environmental and social concerns. One of the major concerns was the potential harm to biodiversity. The project area is home to numerous species, including 21 nationally listed threatened plant species and 12 nationally listed threatened mammal species. To address these concerns, environmental protection efforts included creating alternative habitats for affected species, implementing measures to protect water quality, and monitoring the impact on local wildlife throughout the construction process. The construction of the dam also led to the displacement of numerous local residents, impacting several villages in the area and causing a massive controversial uproar as citizens cried out. This shift in the community's social fabric disoriented their daily lives and led to the loss of important historical sites and cultural heritage that got sunk underwater. To help out, comprehensive resettlement programs were made to provide new housing while maintaining the cultural and social integrity of the affected communities. But let's be real, it was tough. Losing your ancestral home and having to adapt to a whole new way of life is a big deal and it really shook up the community. Throughout this whole project, there was this ongoing struggle between making progress with this magnificent dam and trying to preserve the environment and people's way of life. Sure, the dam's going to be great for renewable energy and helping the economy, but it came at a pretty steep price in terms of messing with the environment and turning people's lives upside down.
And this will be something that'll always be part of Yusuf Ali Dam's story. Well, that's it for today, folks. Do you live in Turkey? What do you think of this project, and how will it affect the lives of Turks and the region? Let us know in the comments section, and please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Thank you.